Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I got a really special project for you guys. We're gonna be taking one of these $5 USB Raspberry Pi Zeros and converting it to a USB attack platform capable of breaking into a fully patched Windows 10 computer. So let's get started. So before we begin, I gotta throw out a disclaimer, which is you break it, you bought it type thing. So I'm not responsible for whatever happens or if you get in trouble with the law or something like that using this device. So the user MAME82 took his time to create this script that will basically combine all these attack platforms into this Raspberry Pi Zero. It's an install script that basically installed Poison Tap or Bash Bunny and also uh, the Rubber Ducky all into this little device. Now each tool has its own purpose and I'm going to leave a link in the description on details of what it does but mainly it's a very strong attack platform. We're only going to be scratching the surface of what this guy can do but that's more than enough to show you how powerful it is. So with that being said, let's get over to the install process. All right, we're gonna be starting off with Etcher and we're gonna be using the Raspbian Jesse Lite. We don't need the GUI or anything, but Etcher is the pro software that I'm gonna be using to load everything. And I've been using Etcher a lot actually to load even ISOs into USB so I could install like other software. As soon as you're done, pop in the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and we're gonna basically go from the normal, you know, process of getting it up and running, setting up the country code and keyboard and all that stuff. As soon as that's done, this is where the fun begins. Now, the first thing you need to do is get your Wi-Fi working. So we're gonna use WPA CLI. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it's easy. You just do add network so it knows that network zero. You can add as many networks as you want, depending where you are. Then you would set the network using uh, SSID. Then you would set network again, whatever passcode it is, PSK or whatever it is, uh, your password. Once you're done with that, you would enable the network itself and it should automatically try to obtain an IP address. See, I, I jumped the gun a little and I thought it wasn't obtaining it, so I tried to use DHC client just to grab the IP, but in the end, it, it grabbed it on its own. I just had to wait a few more seconds. Once that's done, we're gonna jump right into um, doing an app get update. Now, I was just pinging before just to make sure that I had network. Now, first thing you wanna do is app get update, make sure all your repositories are up to date. That way the software that we're going to grab it will be available and the latest version. Next thing we're going to be doing is app get install git. We're going to let that run for a few seconds. Uh, it does take a little bit because I actually added John in there, which I really didn't need to, but I did anyway. I don't know why. Here's the most important part. You wanna get the repository. And remember to use recursive. So it's git clone recursive, http github.com slash mame82 p4wnp1. As soon as that's done, it's gonna download everything you need to get the project running. Once everything is all downloaded, you wanna change over to the directory and then just type in this install. Now this will take a while, so sit back, relax, do what you want to do. It's going to take, I think, at least a good 15, maybe 20 minutes. Once you're done, we're going to jump right into the directory and take a look at John, okay? So this is where your, it's called John the Ripper, and your password files are held here called password.list. So when you're breaking into a Windows computer, it basically gets the hash, and then it's trying to brute force the hash. So depending on how many words you have in this word list, that's what it has to use to crack the uh, hash itself. So the more the better, but it's got a really good list to start off with. Once you're done with that, basically you wanna go into setup config, go back to a root directory of p4wm p1 and scroll down the setup config. This is where you change all the settings to what you want this USB attack dongle to be. Now first, what we're gonna try is the keyboard method. We're just gonna basically uh, comment out the network and then delete the comment and then start it off from the USB keyboard method. And this should actually just load the notepad and write down keyboard is up. So as you can see, as soon as we plug in the USB device, it boots up, thinks it's a keyboard, and then opens up a notepad and says keyboard is running. Now the next step, what we're gonna do is change the payload up and change it over to Win10 Lock Picker, which will basically grab the hash, decrypt it, and then break through the lock screen. All right guys, so let's do this real world test. So basically what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna lock out my computer. 
All right, stick this guy into my USB hub. And now it should be booting up. Nothing's going on yet, but it's gonna start detecting the device. And you'll see on the bottom right, some stuff came up saying the device has been detected. Let's head back right over here and it's gonna start executing the commands. While that's happening, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. You can see it's trying to find the password. It's found the hash. And there you go, logged in. So thanks for watching my video. If you guys liked it, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it in the comments below. Now this project gets updated almost daily. So whatever you're watching right now might be relevant in the future. So keep that in mind. So if you guys are new to this channel, consider hitting that little subscribe button and that little bell notification so you know when the next video is gonna be up. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.